take these words and cause many people to come and be delivered from the problems they have. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight I want to um, talk with you, preach to you, from the subject, how to get out of the mess that you're in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I, I know that there could be a better word for that, <laughs> but I'm not led to use it. <laughs> I'm led to just say what you have already probably said today. Yes, Lord. Somewhere today, you have already probably said, I'm in a mess. And that's true. And that's true <clears throat> not only with you and me, but that's true with most people. And one of the things that I want to tell you is that that's true with most people at every level of living. Often people believe because they're not educated or because they don't have a lot of money, that and those are the reasons why they have problems. But I pass to people who uh, are not even on welfare, and so they're poorer than the welfare people. On the other hand, I pass to people who have a mink stole for every day in the week. And I can assure you that there is problem, there are problems difficulties, and people find themselves in a mess at every level. Whether they're driving Mercedes-Benz, whether they're driving Rolls-Royce, some of them are in such a mess that they drive those Rolls-Royce just straight on off into the river. On the other hand, and, and, and so I want, I want you to overcome that tonight. I, for an instant, uh, when I lived in a log cabin, and I went back to see that log cabin just uh, three or four weeks ago, uh, when I lived in a log cabin, it was my assumption that when I started making money and would no longer live in a log cabin, I no longer have a lot of problems. But now I have discovered that things themselves can become problems. Yeah. And there are a lot of problems that I have now I didn't have when I was in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went right through to the, the, the stock failure in 1930 without even knowing it had failed. <laughs> because we didn't know, we didn't have no stock. And uh, we were running rabbits before it uh, failed and running rabbits after it failed. <laughs> and so we didn't know nothing about no stock. And so it is uh, today. Today, if, if, because I have a little stock here other than yah, not much, but other than yah, I'm concerned when they talk about the stock is falling. But when I was in the country, I didn't even know that the stock had fallen and didn't care in the second place. So my point is that there are problems at every level. And for reasons that I want you to confess tonight, you have found yourself in one mess or the other. Now it may be that you are in those obvious positions uh, of, of being in trouble. You may be on drugs, and that's an obvious situation. You may be a hooker. Uh, you may be a drug pusher. Uh, you may be a gang member who wants to get out of it and can't get out of it. You might have stolen. You might be in trouble. You might be facing uh, years in prison. On the other hand, you might be one of these nice sinners. You have gotten yourselves into things that we don't necessarily call uh, sin, uh, the white-collar sin, the high-class maliciousness and hatred and jealousy and envy and stealing at the top rather than stealing at the bottom. When people on welfare steal, they send them to prison. Mm -hmm. When folk at high corporate level steals, they send them to resorts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but wherever you are, you're in a mess. Mm -hmm. 
you might be a PhD and you're a professor and you might be uh, a vice president of a corporation and you have embezzled or you just haven't been honest or you have messed up and the joy of the Lord no longer bubbles and dwells richly within you. And so I want to talk tonight about how to get out of the mess that you find yourself in. Now, number one, acknowledge that it is a mess and that you are in a mess. One of the reasons why people are not being delivered and people are not experiencing forgiveness as they used to forgive is that nobody is asking for it. Nobody is acknowledging mm -hmm. that they are in the mess that they are in. I have a friend of mine, he's an alcoholic, and every time I see him, he's staggering everywhere, and the first thing he says, ain't no problem, I can handle it, I, I can handle it, ain't no problem. Mm -hmm. and, and all of the people of higher learning, the psychologists and, and what have you, tells you that it begins with acknowledging that you have a problem or that you are in a mess. And let me rush to tell you that you, there is comfort in knowing that you are not the first person to be in that particular mess. Now, the devil tries to make you be the first person, the only person, the only stupid jerk that has ever done that. But if all of the stupid jerks that have done exactly what you have done were gathered together, an arena couldn't hold them. Mm -hmm. Because long before we were born, people were making mistakes and getting into messes just like you are. The second thing is the devil tells you quickly to hide away. Mm -hmm. Stop going to church. Stop going to church. One of the most popular sayings among people who haven't been to church lately, and, and as pastor, I said, I haven't seen you, where have you been? Oh, I've had trouble. Oh, I've had problems. Mm -hmm. And I have just stayed away. Now, that's one of the great mm -hmm. tricks of the devil. Mm -hmm. If the devil can get you into a corner by yourself, if he can get you away from the fellowship of the believers, if he can get you out of the church and from under the voice of the preacher, if he can get you just, don't even stay away just to hear me or anybody else on television. You need the physical touch of the fellowship of the believer. Yes. Uh, you need this and you need the day-to-day -day nurturing of a congregation. But whatever mess you are in, don't fall for the lie that I'm in too much of a mess to go to church. Amen. I'm in too much of a mess to go to the believers. Yes. I'm in too much of a mess to talk to my pastor. I've had people to say, Pastor, I was just so ashamed. I, 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 just, I just didn't feel worthy. You don't have to feel worthy to come to me. Uh, I, let, let, me let me just tell you, early in my ministry in Los Angeles, <clears throat> I remember I extended the invitation. I asked people to accept Christ. And a young lady stood up in the back, and I pleaded for her to come forward. And she got in the aisle and started walking and then just backed up and went back to her seat and sat out. When the service was over, she came down and she said, Now, Pastor, don't think it was anything on your part, but I just can't be saved. I am I'm going to hell. I know I'm going to hell, and there's no way and nothing. I said, Well, what about it? She said, Oh, no, I can't tell you. I don't want to embarrass myself. I said, well, would you come to my office this Wednesday and let's talk? She said, well, there's no need of me coming because I'm going to hell. She said, I said, but just come and talk to me. And she said, all right, all right, I'll come talk. And she came. And, we, and I said, now tell me what is this that you've done that you think you can't be saved? She said, no, I can't tell you. It was I said, I'll tell you what you do. Be seated. <laughs> and let me tell you some things I have done. <laughs> now, I'm not proud of them. I wished I hadn't done them, and I wish I won't do them no more, but the Spirit is telling me to tell you what Pastor Hill, Dr. E.V. Hill, pastor of the great Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, oh, Lord. outstanding. Let, let me tell you what he has done, oh, Lord, Lord. 
And I got halfway through it, and she stood up, and she said, I want to accept Christ. <laughs> she said, I want to accept Christ as my personal Savior. I said, well, what did I say? She said, Reverend, if he can save you, <laughs> he can save me. <laughs> he, said, he said, I never thought I had no hope before, but after listening to you, she said, but now that ain't the end of it. She went home and told her daddy, daddy, you don't have to go to hell because the new pastor of Mount Zion is a bigger rascal than you've ever been in your life. And he's pastor of the church. And she brought her daddy and I baptized him. She brought her mother who was saved. I fellowshiped her and she brought both of her brothers and I baptized them because they said, now, he saved you? I said, yes, he saved me. He said, well, baptize me. Now, don't write me and ask me what I've done because y'all don't do right by people when they confess. Y'all put them in jail. The Lord would let you set them free and put your arms around them. So I ain't going to tell you. I'm going to keep it between me and God. And God, uh, God's better than y'all. So don't, don't ask me nothing. Say amen. Now, uh, so what I'm trying to tell you is that you are not alone in your experiences. I wish you were. I wish you were the only drunkard in the, in, in the United States. It so happens that's a million. I wish you were the only dope user in the United States. It so happened that about four, four, I believe about four million. I wish you were the only one who had made stupid mistakes but there are, uh, I'm sure if we have 200 million, there are 200 million who have made stupid mistakes. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm not trying to justify you. I wish you hadn't done it. I wish you had not broken your mother's heart. But all of those things of the past, I'm just trying to say, where do you go now? Yes. And the psalmist gives us a prayer to pray because when you have messed up, the first thing that's affected is your prayer life. The first thing that the devil convinces you of is you can't pray no more. And you begin to become negligent at the point of prayer. You feel too unworthy to come before God and pray. And your mistake is you have never been worthy enough to come before God and pray. Amen. The same Christ who has stood before you and the same Holy Spirit who has made intercessions on your behalf because we know not how to pray, he taketh our prayers. The same Holy Spirit is with you in your mess. Not for your mess, but he's right there with you. Amen. That was there before you messed up. Ain't nobody moved out of the room. The Lord is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. The love of God is with you. The love of true believers are with you. Nobody has moved out of the room. The only thing that has come in is the devil has put a whammer on you and made you believe Amen. that God doesn't love you. The church doesn't want you. Nobody does this. Yes. Nobody wants that. Yes. And that's all of the devil. Amen. Yes. Good word. Everybody Good word. who's been born again still loves you. Every preacher who has been called to preach still loves you. Yeah. You run across a preacher who has his nose up around sinners and because people have made mistakes, he's never been called to preach. Right. One of the most humbling experiences of being called to preach, when you really know you've been called to preach, is that you see yourself in everybody else. You see yourself. You see the same mistakes you made, the same doubts you had, the same problems you had, you see yourself in everybody else. So you don't walk around with your nose up, but you humbly walk around Amen. saying, there but by the grace oh, of God go yes, I. Jesus. And so I'm saying to you tonight, you're not alone. Everything is still around you. The grace of God is still there. God's love is still there. Jesus' love is still there. The Holy Spirit is still ready to take your utterances before the presence of God. Yeah. And you have not been the first one to mess up. And you don't have to commit suicide. And you don't have to even move out of town. Amen. 
and get into a new environment because any friend that forsakes you because you have messed up was not a friend in the first place and you don't need him, God can give you some more friends. God can give you some more friends. You don't, you don't have to pack up in New York and I'll move out to California where I'll have a new environment. You come out here and the same rascals are out here. Yes. You can stay and fight it out right where you are. Amen. So I want to give you a prayer and I want to point out in this prayer how you can get out of your mess. It's uh, Psalms 51. I've lived with it all of my life. And the way you can get out of your mess is, first of all, appeal to the mercy of God. Oh, Lord. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. Yes. Have mercy upon me, O oh God. Mm -hmm. Appeal to the mercy of God. He is a merciful God. Okay. I mean, and he doesn't have just a little bit of mercy, but look here, according to your, talking to God, loving kindness. Now, that, that, that's where I want you to help me here. And according to the multitude, oh, yes. multitude yes, Lord. of your tender mercy. Jesus. Now, that's the, that's the approach. That's the approach. That's the approach. The approach is to the mercy of God. Don't, don't necessarily depend on the mercies of people and, and, and throwing yourself on the mercies of this and the mercy. No, no. Let's go to God. God has to line up the people, yes. and God has to touch folk that you have to deal with. But first of all, go to God. And the psalmist, David, the writer of this psalm, had messed up a whole lot. Oh, yeah. Now, his wasn't no little mess up. <laughs> his wasn't no little, he didn't smoke a little cigarette. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> this booger had messed up a whole lot. Yes, he has. And listen to how he prays. He says, have mercy upon me, O God. Mm. And that's where I want you to start tonight. The matter, the matter of deliverance is between you and God. Yes, yes. Now quit blaming everybody. Quit talking about, well, I wouldn't have done it as yet. No, 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 no. Mm. Have mercy upon me, O God. Yes. And here, and you're not instructing God, but here's how you pray. I want it according, according, not to your justice. I'm not asking you for no just. I, I heard a man say the other day that when he get before God, he'd be satisfied with his just reward. I said, not me. No, no sir, brother, let's don't deal with no justice when you stand before God. Mercy! Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. The only word's gonna be in my vocabulary. Mercy, 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 yes, mercy. Again. amen. And the wonderful thing about it, we are saying something and asking for something that God is anxious to give us. Yes, amen, amen. I mean, he's not somewhere holding back and regulating mercy and, 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 and putting out a small portion of mercy. He has plenty mercy. Oh, he would that nobody should perish. Amen. He doesn't want nobody amen. to go to hell. Oh, so he has mercy everywhere. Glory to God. Yes, now, wait a minute. Now, one of the reasons why some of y'all ain't believing me tonight is because you have run into these unmerciful church folk. Come on, tell us about that. But God ain't like church folk. That's right. Mm. Amen. God ain't like church folk. Right. He, you, you run into some of these unmerciful church. I, I, I used to not only look at uh, Trinity all day uh, when I'm at home, but I used to, as soon as I get in my radio, I mean my car, I turn on my radio to religious broadcast. I don't do that no more. I have to select which one. Because brother, they come on the air, you're going to hell and my brothers and sisters and God's going to put you in hell. And God didn't call us to preach about no. folk going to hell. God called me to tell you it's another place. Come on, come on. Oh, bless his name. There's another place. Every sinner in town pretty well knows hell is. <laughs> Amen. And he pretty well knows he deserves hell. Oh, yeah. But the gospel, the good news, the glorious news, 
The thing that I love to preach about is there's another place. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell. You can, but you don't have to. God has provided not for the righteous, but for the sinners who will confess it. He has provided another place. Oh, praise his name. And that place is glory. And I want to tell you who have messed up, you can go. Amen. And the reason I'm trying to take advantage on national, international television is because so many people have already told you. I mean, I've heard it over the radio. You just threw. You just out. You just going to no, know you are not. Amen. Amen. You are a candidate for the streets of glory. Amen. Praise God. That sinner dying on that cross. I said, that sinner dying on that cross. That sinner dying on that cross looked up and said, Jesus, I recognize you. You ain't what they say you are. You king. And you going to your home. And I just want to ask you, remember me. Remember me. And according to this book, Jesus said this day, thou shalt dwell with me. He did not say, now, <clears throat> how much liquor have you drunk? <laughs> and I don't drink liquor. I've been drunk once in my life, 14 years old. I got drunk when I was 14, and I got sick enough to last till 56. I'm 56 <laughs> now. <laughs> that one fifth of liquor that I drank. And you know mama never whipped me. And my mama would whip me on general principles. But my mama never whipped me because she saw what that wine did to me for two days. I haven't been drunk since. And I, I'm, I'm, but I'm not talking about drinking. I don't know what you have messed up, but all I'm telling you is you can approach God not from his just side. Oh, bless his name. And I don't have anything I don't have anything but pity for those of you out there who are trying to approach God from his just side. Mm, this sister in our church came up to me and said, I think if I would think hard enough, I might could find something that I'm guilty of. Don't take no Philadelphia lawyer to find nothing on me. My sins are ever before me. And they're not gross and grotesque. The sins that I worry about are not so much the weaknesses of my flesh, but it's what I have not become in the spirit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's my negligence to what I could have done for God that bothers me. It, it's, 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 it's what I ought to be doing more of. I want to be more kind and gentle and patient and long-suffering. Those are the things that grapples me. Our nation is becoming so rough until it needs some kind Christians. Yes. And so he comes to God. He says, have mercy upon me, O God. And you have that privilege tonight. I don't care what you be. You may have already been indicted. You may, and I can't regulate that. I don't have no money to send you for no lawyer. But I tell you what, you can approach God. And you can say, have mercy upon me, O God. And then he says, here's, here's, here's how I want you to answer me. According to your loving kindness. And that's God. He's loving and kind. And then David said something here that I, I've often used. According to the multitude of your tender mercy. God has plenty mercy. And David said to God, I done messed up so. You're not going to be able to handle this with just ordinary mercy. <laughs> you're going you, you to need a whole multitude. You, this, this just won't be no one swipe of mercy on toast. You're you going to have to <laughs> go back and dig up a whole lot of it. And some of you that I'm listening to, you know also that you, you're going to require the multitude of his mercy. And then he's bold enough to come right out and say, here's what I want you to do through the multitude of it, blot out my transgression. Just blot it out. Just blot it 
out. Now, I'm fully aware of all of the scriptures that you scriptural people can give me right quick on how the sins, we have to give an account of them, we have to stand. But let me testify to somebody. Let, let, let me move over you professors and let me tell you personally, E.V. Hill, to you in that living room, you don't have to kid yourself. God can blot out your transgression. God can blot it out. God can wash you and cleanse you to the point that even you won't remember what you did. Now, I'll give you that as my personal testimony, and don't ask me nothing about my personal business, but i give you as my personal testimony that out of the multitude of God's word, I'll go a little bit further. I did something foolish my first year as a pastor back in Houston, Texas. And if it had gotten into the hands of certain folk in that church, they would have put me out of that church and my ministry would have been gone. A few saints got around me and we prayed and we asked God, blot it out. And it has never risen since. Even the woman who got a hold to it, who wanted to destroy me as a 20-year-old preacher. She even forgot what she was doing. She's walking around there looking like she's going crazy. She said, uh, I, I remember when I had the business meeting. She said, uh, I think I have something I want to say, but I don't know if I want to say. I was behind the pulpit, blot it out, blot it out, blot it out, blot it out. I'm not trying to make excuse for sin and sinners, but I'm telling you, if you're in a mess, you can ask them to blot it out. And he throws it behind him. And he has no behind to throw it to. He throws it in the sea of forgetfulness where it never rises against you in this day, not the world to come. And I want to encourage somebody here that thinks all of life is gone. I want to encourage somebody who feels that you don't have another chance. I want to encourage somebody who feels that all of life is worthless. Therefore, you ought to just go jump. No! Get out on your knees somewhere and say, blot it out! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Blot it out. And I tell you one thing. It will be a kind act. Amen. Blot it out. Some of you young married couples, you're all, all messed up because you're fighting in your home and can't stay. Because you refuse to let God just blot out some things. Just blot out something. Just blot out something. Quit, quit staying up all night talking about we got to get this thing straight. Just blot it out. I would have been married yesterday 35 years ago, and we didn't stay together because we didn't have no arguments. We almost had a fist fight one night. <laughs> and the only reason we didn't, my wife's in the middle of the floor, about, let's just get to it. I said, sugar, who would win? I mean, who would win? Now you talk about let's just get to it. <laughs> Who would win? What, what are your chances? And she said, I'd get in my lick. <laughs> and then I said to her, why don't you use your best equipment? And she said, what's that? Those dry eye tears. You, you know, my wife had eyes just as dry as they could be with tears. Just, she could pump them out any moment. <laughs> and the minute they come out, that dismantle me. Mm -mm, I couldn't stand to see baby cry. Yeah. All right, all right, whatever you want, whatever you want. But now that she in the ring talking about, let's just get to it. <laughs> she wasn't using her best equipment. I, I mean, just one, one of these would have laid her out. <laughs> but if she would just lean over there and just cry, come on, come then on. it's all over with. Yes, sir. Whatever the argument is, it's all over with. Whatever the argument is, it's all over with. And so you who are young couples tonight, why don't you try to just let the Lord blot it out? Quit, 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 quit trying to get to the end of it. Quit bringing in witnesses to testify. Quit, 
trying to prove your point. Blot it out! Amen. 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 And then listen here. Wash me. And he's able to do that. Thoroughly from my iniquities. And cleanse me from my sin. Now here's the basis of God's action. For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I done this evil in your sight. That's the basis of God's actions to our requests. Is that when we stand up there and say, it was not Paul, it was not Jan, it was not Billy, it was not Sue. I acknowledge my transgression. I want to give you a word of advice on that. You don't have to acknowledge it to everybody you meet. Because a lot of people, all they want to do is hear, what did you do? And then they'll take you to the street. If you have a prayer partner, if you have somebody in whom you can confide, if you have a pastor that's a man of great reputation, and you feel like you want to talk it out, then go ahead. But I've come to tell you, you don't even have to do that. There is one mediator between God and man. And sometimes, sometimes when we've messed up a whole lot, uh, 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 you know, uh, elder so-and-so prayer looks like it'll get through a little bit better. And, and, and you'll be watching television and you'll see me and you'll write me and say, Evie, he'll pray for me because you can really touch God. And Billy Graham, you know, you live next door to him. Uh, but, but, oh! You have a prayer privilege of your own. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. 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 Oh, you can come on in the room. Thank you. I never shall forget this. I never shall forget this. Uh, there were secret services and secret service and police and central intelligence agents and everybody around the office of President Kennedy. Do you remember? And uh, the possibility of somebody just walking in to the president unannounced and unintroduced and what have you was nil. If somebody, if I had walked up and said, I'm going in there, they would have said, stop. And if I had pro proceeded, they would have stopped me. Yes, Amen. So, so, so I don't care how big you are, you just couldn't walk in the president's office. But you remember when Kennedy was having his press conference? And his little son just twaddled right on through the Secret Service, right on through the police, right on through the cameramen, and, and pulled on his daddy's coattail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's what you can do. That's what you can do. That's what you can do. I said, that's what you can do. God is holy. God is righteous and perfect. God has angels and archangels. God has his son at the right hand. And therefore, you, one of your problems is, how do I get to him? Just come on. Come on, come on. You are his child. You can just travel on through everybody and just walk up to the throne of God and say, have mercy on me, oh God. You have prayer privilege. I don't want to discourage you. Call this number. Call any numbers. Now, don't call those folk where you have to send them money before they pray for you. Yeah. But just call. Call anybody. But don't you neglect and don't you forget you can go to him for yourself. And don't you forget when you get there, go ahead and tell him. Amen. Go ahead and tell him. I messed up. Go ahead and tell him. I acknowledge my transgression. And then go ahead and tell him to purge me, cleanse me, wash me, restore the joy of my salvation. Let me go out. So, so tonight, wherever you are and whatever condition you are in, I want you to have a believing session. You, the reason why you're down, because you've been in a an unbelieving session. Everything and everybody's against you. But I come to tell you out of the scripture 
But more than that, I share my heart with you. I've been there. I, I, I know where you are. I've been there. And I, I, I've seen the lightning flash. And I know where you are. And don't fall for the tricks. Don't let him pull you off by yourself. Don't let him pull you away from the church. If you really messed up, you ought to be on the front row Sunday. You ought to be right there saying, Lord, speak to me. Use my pastor to give me a word. And then somebody near you say, pray with me. And then go to God from his mercy side. Ask the Lord for mercy today and ask the Lord to blot out your transgression. Flush it. Blot it out. Amen. Cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. And then... Acknowledge it. Go ahead and acknowledge it. And once you've acknowledged it, that's enough. That's enough. You don't have to get on no national television constantly talking about what you've done. God is faster than a computer. You can erase almost all of history just by pushing the wrong button on a computer. And you can erase all your past by saying, Mercy, Mercy, Lord, Mercy, Lord. And began to come on out, began to come on out. If God uses you to testify about your past and about your problems, go ahead. Don't be ashamed. I've used my testimony to help a many person to come to Christ. I have not used it to let people just talk. But when, when I see somebody about to go down for the third time, I say, hey, buddy, let me tell you this before you go down. Come on, come on to Jesus. God did not create you for mess. You and Satan got into mess. And God will not forsake you because you have gotten into the mess you are in. God will deliver you. And even right now. And he'll do it out of the multitude of his mercy. Let me give you one, one illustration and I'm through. One illustration I'm through. I had a friend of mine who came to me once and I helped him. I had a friend of mine who came to me the second time and I helped him. I had a friend that come back the third time and I didn't answer the phone. I had a friend that come back to me the fourth time and I told my secretary I wasn't in for him because I just have a little. But God, God, you, you can't wear him out. You can't wear him out. That. I'm trying to help somebody tonight who thinks that because you're at the end of your road that God is at the end of his road with you. He's not. He hadn't even started showing you his mercy. And he'll do that now. I want you to bow your head right where you are. And I, want, I want you to believe tonight. Believe, believe that you, you've got to believe it now. You have to believe it. Yes. I'm not the only one talking. Satan is right there talking to you and pointing you out. But I did not come down here to lie. I did not come down here to be paid. I came down here to appeal to you that you can get deliverance from the mess that you find yourself in. The husband that I talked to a couple of days ago who you separated from your wife a year ago, you can get deliverance. You promised to come to church. Be at church Sunday. Be at church Sunday. Husbands and wives can come back together. Children can become reconciled with mothers and fathers. Church members can become reconciled one with another. Churches that are fighting and in court can become reconciled, but it's through the mercy of God. God will just have to say, let it be. And all I want to do is testify to you that God will say, let it be. He will blot it out. He will blot it out. Now with your heads bowed, believing, believing, I'd like for you to just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I have messed up. I have blown it. I don't see no hope nowhere. I don't know anybody I can go to. I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. 
and I come believing and I'm asking that you will have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness and your tender mercy. I acknowledge my transgression. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge everything that you know about me. I agree that it's wrong. And I now, by your mercy, give it to you and ask that you blot it out. Wash me. Cleanse me. Use me. In the name of Jesus. An old shoe may not have any value, but a sinner or a Christian who will repent and ask for mercy, this may be the night that God will start using you like you have never been used before. Farmer, pastor, get on up and go to church. Yes. Ex-preacher, get on up and go to church. Yes. Ex-choir yes. member, get on up and get in that choir. Ex Sunday school work, get on up and get ex witness, get on back to that Come on. Bible Come class. On. Yes. You ain't through. God has power to cleanse you. Amen. 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 Pastor, come on over and sit down just a minute. Let's say thanks to Pastor Hill. I, wanna, I know you've got to get on the freeway in a minute, but I, I want to ask you a, a, a final question or two. First of all, those of you that prayed with Pastor Hill, and Pastor, they're already calling haven't even hardly said amen and the phones are ringing and people are calling in to receive Christ. I don't know, just vicariously, I just feel old sin burdens just rolling away and people are seeing that there really is hope and help and mercy. And I want to talk for just a minute about some of these old traditions that have planted in people's minds this idea that God is kind of like some kind of an old angry orkin man, ready to Amen. hit them with the hammer just Amen. the minute they Amen. do something, something wrong. There's, there's, a, there's a little word here that I'm hearing over and over again in recent days yes. and weeks yes. that yes. the Holy Spirit evidently is wanting to get through yes. to the yes. body out there and to yes. the sinners out there, and we're all sinners. But first of all, let's just welcome yes. Merle from Waterloo, Iowa, Praise 33 God. years of age. Praise Frederick God. from uh, Van Nuys, California. LaVon from Texas City, Texas. Peggy from Albany, Georgia. Yes. Jane from Whittier, California. Colette from Kansas City, Kansas. Sandy from Paris, California. Bernadette from Binghamton, Binghamton, New York, yes. way, way up in New York. Yes, Ruben yes. Uh, from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Praise Patricia God. from L.A. And Praise Benton God. from Long Beach, California. And just so many people. And now the phones are just all busy. If you yes. get a busy signal, don't be discouraged. Just hang in there for a few minutes. Wait a few minutes. And if you just can't get through, there's an address on your screen. You can write to the, to the box office. Yes. But I have a feeling if you'll dial again, wait a few minutes, the, the, the lines will clear and you'll be able to get through. Yes. Pastor, what in the world? Where? I've got a theory I'm going to try on okay. you, and it, it, it may sound a little hard, mm -hmm. but there isn't a real church in the world that won't confess and admit that it's the pure grace of God that saves us. Amen. In other words, when we're in sin, we're lost, and when we come for the first time yes. to the cross, to the altar, we're baptized, we come into the body of Christ. Yes, yes, yes it's grace, it's yes. grace. That they do something, something wrong. There's, there's, a, there's a little word here that I'm hearing over and over again in recent days and yes. weeks yes. that yes. the Holy Spirit evidently is wanting to get through. Yes to the body out there and to yes. the sinners out there, and we're all sinners. But first of all, let's just welcome yes. Merle from Waterloo, Iowa, Praise 33 God. years of age. Praise Frederick God. from uh, Van Nuys, California. LaVon from Texas City, Texas. Peggy from Albany, Georgia. Yes. Jane from Whittier, California. Colette from Kansas City, Kansas. Sandy from Paris, California. Bernadette from Binghamton, 
Binghamton, New York, yes. way, way up in New York. Yes, Ruben yes. Uh, from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Praise Patricia God. from L.A. and Praise Benton God. from Long Beach, California. And just so many people. And now the phones are just all busy. If you yes. get a busy signal, don't be discouraged. Just hang in there for a few minutes. Wait a few minutes. And if you just can't get through, there's an address on your screen. You can write to the, to the box office. Yes. But I have a feeling if you'll dial again, wait a few minutes, the, the, the lines will clear and you'll be able to get through. Yes. Pastor, what in the world? Where? I've got a theory I'm going to try on okay. you, and it, it, it may sound a little hard. Mm -hmm. But there isn't a real church in the world that won't confess and admit that it's the pure grace of God that saves us. Amen. In other words, when we're in sin, we're lost, and when we come for the first time yes. to the cross, to the altar, we're baptized, we come into the body of Christ. Yes, yes, yes it's grace, it's yes. grace, it's mercy yes. that saves us. Yes. But then once we're saved, it seems like all of a sudden... Yes. It's law. It's, we're back under yes, law, yes. but the laws are never the same for the different church. Yes, each yes. law, each church has, has a different, different set of laws yes. to keep me saved yeah. or to keep me in the good graces yeah. of God or my church or my pastor. Or what. yeah, What's we, going on? We move so quickly from <laughs> Christianity and the gospel and we make our churches a religion. Yeah. We, we move so quickly from the gospel yeah. and then we try to in, 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 in where we're really messing up is in this whole area of discipleship. <clears throat> what constitutes a Christian walk once you have been saved mm. is where we're really messing up. Mm. The, the, the I, I'm with you. I'm with there you. are those who are saying a Christian walk constitutes no more sin. That's not biblical. Right. The, 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 the but let me, let me tell you where the problem is. Yes. And, and in, I'm talking in my own church now where mm. I grew up. Yes, God forgives. Yes, the grace of God saves. Yes, yes, the blood covers. Yes, you're forgiven. Yes. But if you mess up, yes. Now, now hear me for a minute. You, you mess up, then they open the book, and, and it does say in that Bible, no drunkard is going to enter heaven. Yes. So you go get drunk after you're saved yes. and after you're Christian. So right away, you ain't going to heaven. Yes. You, you, you see the problem? Yes. Now, uh, don't, don't write me on this, but let me give it to you. <clears throat> Just accept it. All right. No drunkard, no fornicator, no adulterer, no one will go to heaven who hadn't been saved. Okay. These are men. Okay. See, if a drunkard who is a drunkard tries to enter the kingdom who hadn't been saved, he can't enter. All right. But if he has been saved and then fell to that sin, the blood has forgiven him of that sin. It continues. It continues. Yeah. I had a shower this morning. I don't want you to smell me. <laughs> going to need another one tomorrow. I will, I will have a, a shower tonight before I go to bed. And yeah. I'll have another one in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And tomorrow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are to me. Now, no drunkard, no adulterer, no fornicator, if that's all to it, will enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if he has confessed his sins, acknowledged his sins, and asked for the forgiveness, and his name is written down, it will never be taken up again, all right. even if he commits that sin again. Okay, now here's where we got the problem yes. again. All right, here was what used to haunt me, because I, I love my church, my church brought me to Jesus. Yes. I'll always love it and I'll always honor it. Yes. But it was, here was the fear. Here was the fear. Okay, I'm saved. I messed up. But the Word says, yes, even if you mess up, if I confess my sin, He's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, yes. even after I'm saved. That's right. But I used to, as a little child, I'd be scared to death. Oh, Lord. I've sinned, but what if I sin and a little time passes here and I haven't yet asked him to forgive me and Jesus comes and now I'm going to be left and I'm going to be well, lost. Well, you're all right because Jesus already asked that you'd be forgiven. I'm trying to find my handkerchief because I want to show you this. 
Now, here it is. Now, you understand my problem? I got your point. I've, I've gone through that same agony. <laughs> okay. As a child. Okay. Now, here it is. <laughs> this is salvation. You've just covered up your water glass. I've then. covered okay. up my water glass. Okay. Now, you, you, you point out the spots on that glass now. Well, I can't see them. Because you're covered. Yeah. <laughs> that is your position with God. You're covered. Oh. You're covered. When the Lord looks at you, he sees only the complete work of Christ. Even if I've messed up yes, there a little yes, bit? Yes, yes, yes. He doesn't see nothing but the complete work of Christ. That's why Christ said, it is finished. Oh, Jesus. Now, that's your position. Okay. But that ain't your condition. Oh. Now, under here where nobody can see, <laughs> your condition ain't perfect. It is your position that's perfect. God has covered you with the blood of the Lamb. Okay. Everyone who accepts Christ is covered, a blanket cover. These people that work around here on TBN, aren't they covered by an insurance policy? Yes, sir. Blanket cover. Now, suppose some of them get sick. Aren't they covered? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the position is that the blood of Jesus has covered me. But that ain't my condition. Therefore, soon as I'm saved, and I know we may differ at that point, but let's go along with me. All right. <laughs> the Holy Spirit begins a work under here. Okay. You see, under here, not visible, yeah, yeah. on the inside. <laughs> He's working on me. <laughs> Can't nobody see it. And every now and then he throws something out. Okay, okay. But, but in the meantime, I'm still covered. And he's still working on me. Oh, Jesus. And then about 10 years ago, you know, up until 15 years ago, you know, I, I was quite profane with my mouth. Really? I'd cuss you out in a minute. A little slip of the lip? Yeah, no, you. no little slip. <laughs> it was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. My members can call and tell you right at the church, don't get me too mad. <laughs> <laughs> now here, cultural difference. Yeah. I came out of Texas. Yeah, yeah. And I came out where a few words weren't considered profane. <laughs> they were considered <laughs> emphasis. <laughs> I love it. But guess what? Guess what has happened to me? <laughs> now, and, 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 and when I use the profane word, I'm covered. I ain't lost because I, I, I said no profane word. All right. That's what his blood, what did he complete if he didn't complete my salvation? Oh, Lord. Now, guess what has happened in the last 10 years, Paul? What else came out? I ain't cussed in, in, in six, seven months. Really? <laughs> because he's throwing it out. He's, sure. he's throwing it out. Sure, sure. He's throwing it out. Oh. Wait a minute now. He's throwing it out. Come on. He's throwing it out. And he's just working on it. But in the meantime, I'm covered. And it ain't, now, wait a minute. Wait. It, it ain't any of my business either. No, no, it it ain't nobody else's business. NBC and nobody else's business yeah, yeah. to look under here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm covered. Yeah, yeah. And then what did, what did Jude say? What's going to eventually happen to me? Eventually, he's going to present me spotless. Faultless. Faultless. Oh. Without a spot on it. <laughs> To the Father. Now, now, now that's eventually. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's one day. But in the meantime, <laughs> cover. Oh, I'm covered. Just as safe as I can be. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Oh, Just as safe as I can God. be. Glory to God. Glory the blood God. of Jesus. Oh, Pastor. Oh, Pastor. we don't know what he did. We, we, don't, we, we haven't come into the full conscience. I tell you what's slipping back into the pulpits is that Jesus became a model of what we can become mm -hmm. if we follow him. Yes. That Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is here to help us to become like Jesus if we follow him. No, that ain't what he did. He covered us. No. He covered us. Thank His blood you, covers all. He covers us. And everybody who accepts him is covered. Oh. Now, in the meantime, the work of the Holy Spirit, he that hath begun a work in you will perform it mm. 
and I'm a living witness, brother, let's, let's, let's get something even more practical. Come on. 18, 19, 20 years old, I hated white people. Sure. Well, sure. And how could I not hate y'all? Yeah. 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 Reared in the South, brought up under unbelievable and ignominious suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I stop hating y'all. <laughs> He's working on it. He's working on it. He's that, working on that it. That came out, didn't and it? And it just came out. It yeah. just came out. People say, oh, he'll show love white folks. That ain't the way I started. <laughs> That's the way it has come out. Okay, okay. That's the way it's come out. So I'm, I'm covered, and, 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 and what I'm trying to get over, I know the gospel, this, this so-called gospel is out here now. They, they said, ain't nobody covered. Mm. Well, then what did Jesus do? And what does accepting him do if it doesn't cover us? Mm. And this process is called sanctification. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thus, I am sanctified and I'm being sanctified. I am not what I used to be, but I'm not what I ought to be. Mm -hmm. And the work in the meantime, mm -hmm. and that's, all I'm required to do under here to get along with God is cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Now, the mess the Holy Spirit is trying to get me to yield something here, and I, I fight with the Holy Spirit. Then I develop a spiritual problem, which is not the loss of my salvation. It may be the loss of my joy. Mm -hmm. It may be mm -hmm. chastisement. Could be the loss of your health. It could be a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. One of the worst things I fear is his chastisement. Mm -hmm. So let the Holy Spirit work under here. What, what, if, what, if, what if that's the same thing? He's tried again and again and again, and it just won't come out. Got to soak it. <laughs> <laughs> soak it. <laughs> soak it. Yes. Yes. I got, a, I got a corn here. I've tried again and again. You got to soak it. I'm, I'm saying that there are some things. Now, let me, let me give you another Why illustration. You that, let, prayer. Prayer. <laughs> prayer. And again, chastisement. Yeah. There are some things that the Holy Spirit warned me about years ago. There are some things the Holy Spirit warned me about years ago. I refused to yield. But when God got through with me, I begged God, here, mm -hmm. please, 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 please take it. Mm -hmm. Please take it. God's fully able. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, God, mama was kind of like God. She had a <laughs> switch that was pretty able to make you willing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. See, see, God has a switch. If you're born again, now if you're a sinner, it, it won't, it won't no, make no, no difference. No, no. But if you're born again, God has a switch of chastisement that will make you willing. Yes. You will say, Lord, please <laughs> have it. Take it. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> do you see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, just, just take. Take whatever you want to do. Yes, yes. But uh, you, you, some things are not good. And, and some of people who tonight are burdened is because they have not had instant removal of certain things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are certain pots that you can let food sit in. You got to soak it overnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I mean? There's that soaking again. Second of all, you parents and grandparents have to pray, you know, not only for yourself, because you ought to be about clean by now, <laughs> but you have to pray for your children who are going through this. Mm -hmm, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I earnestly believe, to the best of my understanding of the total scripture, what all of the scripture says, that those who believe are saved. I don't even put really believe on it. Those who believe yeah. are saved. Yes. I never shall forget what uh, Dr. Malek, Charles Malek, you know, used to be secretary of the UN and then from Lebanon, great Christian campus crusade man. I know of him. Yeah. I never shall forget that they were having a discussion about saving the people in South America. And he said, uh, why waste time there? He said, most of South America saved. <laughs> and then we of a different stripe said, oh, no, 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 they're Catholics. Mm -hmm. He said, Catholics are saved. Mm -hmm. 
And he said, they have called on the name of Jesus. Now, they don't walk like Southern Baptists, <laughs> but they have called on the name of the Lord Jesus. And he opened the eyes of a whole lot of people that what we're really arguing about is the walk after accepting Christ. Yeah, yeah. You see, that's what mm -hmm. we're really... And, and there's great room mm -hmm. for differences. Do you see what I mean? But we must affirm that the blood and the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection mm -hmm. saves and covers everyone who believes. Second, that's our position. That's our position. Mm -hmm. Our condition is not that. My position is here, my condition is down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My position is I'm not only saved and a, and a member of the family of God, I'm Pastor Hill. Like, you know, he's made me a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. That my condition, I'm not the pastor people think I am. I'm not the preacher people think I am. I wish there was. Mm -hmm. I wish Mount Zion had a better pastor. I wish they had a better preacher. But that's my condition. Do you oh. see what I mean? Oh. Now, the Holy Spirit is working down here. Mm -hmm. And one of these days, one of these days, one of these days. They're going to meet. One, one of these days. <laughs> Sometimes I get up here and then. <laughs> <laughs> but one of these days. It's going to meet. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. One of these days, I am going to be like him. And he's going to be through, the process will be through, and the unveiling mm -hmm. of me as I do not yet appear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that whole lot of y'all can uh, uh, criticize E.V. Hill now, because y'all looking at me like I don't yet appear. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I understand. But, oh, when he unveils. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. You know, and when Pastor, the mist has rolled away, just let me just say this. Yeah. <laughs> when I have been made in his likeness, yeah. and he'll say, Father, he is. Mm -hmm. He is. Dear Lord, dear Lord. Hallelujah. For all of us, for some of us, does it have to be our deathbed? <laughs> I think the final shinings will be our yeah. deathbed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think the final shinings, you know, you know my, you know, you know me, you know. There are a whole lot of people saying that they are old because they are holy. <laughs> and I remind some of them they're old because God's trying to get them ready. <laughs> <laughs> He's working on them. More time. Need, more time. On. Need a little more time. Got to soak it. Got to soak it a little bit more. <laughs> Got to soak it. Soak it. God bless you. God bless you. Oh. God let me, bless let me pass You're one incredible. more thought by you, and this is just a thought. First of all, I suppose it is possible that in any church or any denomination, there are people who really are not born again. Amen. I mean, I, I think Amen. you could go into any yes. denomination, any church, from yes. Assembly of God to Catholic to Baptist. Yes. You'd, you'd find people in there. And as a simple there. test, as a simple test, the but, fruit of the Spirit. Exactly. Exactly. You see, exactly. You, see, you see, when I say he's working on men, now, if we took the cover off, we should see some burdens of the Holy Spirit's fruit. <laughs> These are the, uh, yes. Yeah, we should see that. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, it sir. should be, it, it, we, we should see that. <laughs> yeah. We see all the yeah, but, secular media wants to do is pull that cover off. Oh, yeah. Them. Well, the secular media is insisting on we are the finished product. <laughs> There's the problem. Do, do you see what I mean? Yes, sir. And I keep telling them when I talk to them, now, you would have to check with Jesus on that. Mm -hmm. He is the finished product. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I have some friends of mine who claim that they're just about finished. Oh, brother. But that's their problem. That ain't mine. <laughs> yes, that ain't yes. mine. And that's dangerous, too, because the devil will take you on as a, as, as a sparring partner. Mm -hmm. Is it possible, Pastor, I only ask the question, that all of this paraphernalia that is added by some churches or some denominations or some fellowships or some groups. Yeah, you're saved by grace, but now that you're saved, you got to do this this way and you got to don't do that and you got to do do this and you got to do this to stay in the good graces. So could that possibly be to just kind of control that little flock and well, keep it, them in that fold? Yeah, it, it has three 
It has one good purpose, and it has three bad purposes. The good one is that when you were so afraid as a maturing child, that was good for you. Yeah. You see, that kept you out of cookie jars that you might have gotten into. Little, so it was good a in your maturity. Fear yeah. Was yes, good yes, in yes. Sense. Fear of God. Now, there are three bad points, and that is Satan can put some of these conditions in. Do you see what I mean? He can put some of these conditions in. If, if, if you're open to other than thus saith the Lord, then Satan can construct a church. Now, there is a church, and, and I won't call no name, that's obviously has nothing to do with the Bible. Do you see what I mean? Sure. So when, 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 when you have these little conditions, Satan can put some in. Second of all, and this is the worst of all, we can become so concerned about these little differences and segments and contentions and, and, and what have you that we forget to deliver the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, the yes, news. the good news. And the mail is you can be saved. Yes. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We forget to deliver the mail. And finally, the third bad point is a whole lot of these people develop on into legalist spirit where they grade their own papers mm -hmm. and declare themselves as righteous and holy. Yeah. And write books yes. on all yes. of the rest yes. of us. Yes, and write books on, on everybody else. And That's right. sinners. But the, but the main thing is we got so many people out there that never heard the gospel, never heard. The Lord's not going to tolerate us uh, f fooling with our little problems and discussions and everything when there are worlds of people who mm -hmm. have not even heard that Jesus saves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? And that's where, that's, 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 that's my end of it. I, I just want to talk, I have a lot of people who criticize me. They say, you don't uh, stress discipleship. You don't, dis you don't stress doctrines as much as you ought to do. Every time you get up, you talk about people being saved. That's what I was called to. Well, sure. Now, I do this other. They're wrong. I do this. You know, my people <laughs> about as strong as they are. But, and that ain't saying nothing. But anyway, <laughs> the, 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 the forgiven wishes to hurry and tell how you can be forgiven. Exactly. Mm. A hungry man hurries to tell another hungry man where you can find some bread. Yes, you know what I Praise think God. we ought to Bless do? You. I think we ought to just leave that glass and that hanky on this table from now on. I'll have to take as an hanky, illustration. But, but, I'll get another right. one. Did y'all hear this tonight? Praise Did God. Did you hear Pastor Praise Hill tonight? God Praise bless you. God. You may have made a Baptist out of me tonight. I don't well, know. Well, I, I think the important thing that I've just simply tried to say tonight is that I see throughout the nation so many people who are saved. They have accepted Christ. They have messed up. And so many people going around telling them they're nothing. They're out of the kingdom and God doesn't want them. And I just feel that I need to remind them that you are not saved by the law. <laughs> and you're not kept by the law. And yet the law is wonderful to obey. Mm -hmm. yes. You see, it's yes. wonderful. It's the best. It's the judgment of God. So what, yes. what could you get better than the judgment of God? Mm -hmm. But that ain't how he saved us. He saved us out of the multitude of his mercy. He is constantly cleansing us up, of which we are witnesses. Yes. We are testimony. And we're getting better. I have a member of my church, folk want me to turn out years ago, I never shall forget because he was just drunk all the time. I, w I wouldn't turn him out. And he doesn't drink no more. Mm -hmm. Now, it took him 20 years. <laughs> but, he, but we are supposed to be long-suffering. He was under that hand. He was under that. Time, he doesn't right? drink no more. And guess what? He is one of my best That's witnesses right. sure. Sure. to young fellows who are beginning to drink. Sure. Oh, Lord. So... A final little scripture yeah. before Restore we sing. Restore to me again the joy, joy of your salvation and make me willing to yeah. obey it. Then I will teach your ways to other sinners and they, guilty yeah. like me, yes. will return, will repent and return to you. Yeah. That's David. There's the word. That's the There's the word. word. Let's tell Pastor Hill one more time. We love him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. God bless you. Bow with